see uh, myself and welcome Rob McGowan from Life Radio in New Brunswick. Hello, everybody. <laughs> How's it going today, Rob? Good, good. Been a busy day already. Well, that's great. So today everyone's here to find out about how we get prepared for the five pound challenge, which well, is officially <laughs> it's officially starting tomorrow. Awesome. Okay, so Rob, as you've getting been getting yourself prepped, I think we'll go over uh, any questions that you might have, and then we will also um, I'll respond to some questions that had come in through um, Facebook beforehand. All right. Well, so did you want me to say why I'm I want to take this challenge, or is there any yeah, so particular thing where you want to open it up? That's right. So basically, if everyone gets their workbook out, because we. That's why I prepared the workbook. So that this can be very straightforward for people that are participating. So the number one thing uh, to begin is your goal. So why is it that you want to do the challenge? And you know, we know from science and when people reflect on why they want to do something, they're more likely to succeed because you set a vision in your mind of what it is that you want to create. So Rob, tell us about the vision that you want to create uh, over these next uh, five days. Well, the idea for me is to uh, come up with something that's a, a lifestyle, not so much a diet. You know, certain foods in, in golf into my lifestyle. I, the doctor told me I was like pre-diabetes. So I figured I, it's time to get healthy. You know, I have all kinds of pains. And like everybody else, we uh, as we get older, we start to get a lot of pains. And uh, I'm starting to learn that I guess diet can make a difference. So I thought I might take this challenge, learn a little bit about how you should start your day, when you should eat, that kind of stuff. So that, that was my idea and my thinking behind it. And that's wonderful, Rob, you know, that you've got it. You want to make some healthy lifestyle changes. And you mentioned that you're, you're pre-diabetic. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I guess when you were told that by your physician, what sort of things did, I guess, that person kind of review with you or tell you about pre-diabetes? None. They gave me one of those uh, food lists, go see a dietitian, that kind of thing. Okay. which is probably somewhere in a drawer somewhere I never did it or you know it's one of those things and uh went on about my day so but I, I, it's time to actually get started doing something so okay. this is as good as any place to start that, that's great so you're in the place to begin um so again when we're looking at the specific changes so this is your goal so that's great so you've completed step number one of the challenge and that's what I really encourage anybody that's listening today to do is to write down what it is your goal is gonna be for the challenge. So the next thing I wanna get into is the challenge is organized over a five day time period. And in your workbooks that you have, there's a daily, um, you have a daily checklist and then you also have daily activities for you to do. So when we look at the daily checklist, um, so this is the sheet that has the five little, you know, the five themes of the program. And then it also has a little checks beside it. So the goal here is each day, you should complete one task out of each of the five topics that we have. So and there's you... like forgiveness, is this, this the one we're on now? So forgiveness, service, self-love, gratitude, and compassion, one of those five? That's right. So every day, pick one of, at least one of those, and you would tick off one of those boxes. So when you say forgive yourself, what do you, what are you meaning by that exactly? I did well, a lot of bad stuff over my lifetime. So that's a lot of forgiven. I don't know if a one day is enough. Well, and this is why this begins with five days. You know, every journey begins with a single step. And so just becoming aware of the fact that, hey, yeah, maybe I do want to look at how I can forgive myself for certain things. Um, and it's whatever you decide. Maybe you just say, today, I put my hand on my heart. I forgive myself. I'm okay. It's all right. I'm getting there, whatever that means to you. Well, that's a good way to do it. I think people should all uh, realize we can't change yesterday and start working on tomorrow, right? Right. And self-forgiveness is one of the key things I think all of us, when we look at health in general, that ability to forgive ourselves and to let things go, uh, it can go a very long way when it comes to health, which is why self-love is part of our very first day of the challenge. That's starting tomorrow. And we'll go more in depth to that tomorrow. Awesome. So what are the next five things in the checklist? Well, then we've got uh, identif identify things, people, places that trigger you and why. Be an observer of your thoughts and emotions. Pair your nervous system with your current task. Be in the moment. 
and choose to chill, cherish, and check. Okay, a lot of choose. <laughs> so again, so picking one of these five things to do every day. And the fifth one uh, probably will make a little bit more sense to you. And basically, the simple thing to do for this task is to sit down when you eat. Sit, turn off your phone, turn off the television. Just pay attention to the meal that you're eating. So that's an easy way to get through um, the second part of the task. Okay. And what so do we have for the third section? For the Sorry. third section, we got one liter of water before eating or drinking anything else. Uh, eat eight hours in an eight-hour window. Uh, no food two or three hours before bed. Eat as much organic whole foods as you can and be present. And fresh fiber first. Wow. So when people are looking for hard and fast rules, this is probably where a lot of them come in. And we've also had a lot of questions. So maybe we'll spend a little time on this, Rob. Okay. So the first is to drink one liter of water before you eat anything. So the goal here is to try when you wake up in the morning, ideally you would wake up and have two glasses of room temperature water. You can put a little bit of lemon or lime, whatever it takes to kind of hydrate you. I don't want for this challenge, the goal is not to use any artificial sweeteners or anything like that. Because when we wake up in the morning and we actually add water, we know that we're super dehydrated in the mornings. And so a lot of time during the day when we get hungry, it's just because we're thirsty. So that's kind of a hard rule. Now I have one liter of water. So ideally you would have about two cups when you wake up. And then even before you have your breakfast, you would try to get another two cups in there. Now this can be tea, if you wanna have a cup of tea in the morning. Um, and okay, I will include your coffee as your one liter. All right, everybody. So, but if you All could right, get four, cup, four cups of fluid in uh, before you start your breakfast in the morning. Um, another key part of the challenge, this is a must do, is an eight hour feeding window or eating window. So Rob, I think you've been trying something like this yourself, right? Yes. Yeah. I, well, I, I only eat once a day. I don't know if it's good or bad, but I, I get up in the morning and uh, only thing I have is a little bit of beet juice. And then I eat one meal when I'm done working for the day. And it's right around supper time, five o'clock or so. And I try to keep it to that. That's usually just how my day has gone. And it, it seems to be working for me a little bit. But. Right. And so one meal a day can work for some individuals. And we're going to, you know, maybe talk a little bit about more how that's going for you this week. Um, but we know that if you eat in an eight hour window, what happens is that um, you, you stack all your food within, okay? But when you don't eat for the other 16 hours, the body actually goes into a process of self-repair. So many times when you're gonna see by the end of this week, by simply narrowing this window, you will start to lose weight. And we'll talk more about that on, on day three. Now, the other point from this day uh, was talking, I think you mentioned a little bit about uh, screened, no, no food before bed, right? So what do you mean? No chips and Netflix at night? No. Kind of so, this anyway. Well, those are going to be ending, <laughs> right? For these five days. And again, this, these five days are about creating healthy habits. You know, we know most habits take 30 days to really ingrain them, but for five days, you're going to find out what's maybe my one biggest takeaway from this week. But what happens is if you eat before bed, it, number one, it's going to raise your heart rate. And when your heart rate is up, you're not gonna get as much deep sleep and rest. If you don't sleep as well at night, then your body doesn't repair. All your triggering mechanisms to lose weight actually get messed up. Um, and then that kind of, you can wake up not refreshed, feeling more hunger cravings and everything else throughout the day. So it's really the most important thing too, is that two to three hours before bedtime, not to be eating. Okay, so that, like what I used to do is, uh, I would take a piece of bread, toast it, with just natural peanut butter on it. And that was kind of, and I would cut that in four and that would be what I ate at nighttime thinking, well, peanut butter is healthy, but I, I don't eat bread anymore, but that, uh, that seemed to be my, my snack. I thought it was light enough and not a big bag of chips and whatever, but I guess that wasn't a good thing. Well, you know, it, again, maybe it did work for you at the time, but we do know that eating before bed can cause many more side effects or negative consequences, then it causes benefits. We don't need a night lunch. Now, I guess the only statement I would make if anyone's doing the program and they're a diabetic that's on insulin, then those individuals, sure, they may need to have a little a bit of a change at night. Um, but for those individuals that are not on insulin or medications that are gonna drop their blood sugar, you know, the majority of people, 
uh, don't need to eat that snack at bedtime. Okay. Okay. So you're better off without it. Right. And then what do we have then for day four? What are some of those things on the checklist? On day four, we had no screens two hours before bed. Mm -hmm. So what about all my, uh, you know, positive guru heroes and all the people that I go to sleep with and talk to me at night? Uh, <laughs> overhead lighting. Uh, so I can't have my nightlight on reading all night. Nope. Uh, take a nap. Oh, I like that one. Uh, 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 take a nap. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Sleep in complete darkness. Right. And to be in bed by 10. Okay. Okay. So this is one thing I really want people to focus on. Again, you can choose one of these five. Remember, you don't have to stick with all of them. But we know that if you get in bed by 10 o'clock, it's going to allow your body to go into its natural rhythm because at nighttime, we actually release chemicals and they're on a timeline. Uh, this is what our body does. Remember, our body knows what to do if we give it the uh, opportunity. So if you go to bed before 10 or ideally at least before 11, um, then your signals start to come off at one and two o'clock in the morning. And then that gets your body set up for a really good day. Now, if you say, well, maybe I'm a night owl, then okay, then maybe you're not going to do the 10 uh, p.m. checklist, but I would say at least getting no screen time before bed. We know that blue light can inhibit our sleep. So um, really, you can listen to those videos, Rob, um, but I don't want you looking at the screen itself before bed. If you want to read, a simple night light is okay before you go to bed. It's really the blue light from a screen and that's what computer screens give to us. So having like a little night light, that would be fine for you. Okay. Yeah. I, I can live with that. that and then what was the, good. and what was the fifth day? Uh, movement that you look forward to and brings your, brings out your inner child. Well, now we're talking <laughs> movement that allows you to express yourself like dance, uh, movement that brings you into the present moment, movement that does not create massive stress and inflammation and movement that increases mobility. Right. So you can get a lot of points with this one, Rob. Okay. So for you, I think you said you've been doing a little bit more walking recently. Yeah, I, I well, that's not so much in the morning, but it, well, I, I shouldn't say that. I go out in the morning now and I film sunrises. That's been my, uh, how do I get out of bed, get something going, get motivated with a good thought in the morning. So the idea was get up, go look for the sunrise, say a good thought, and that's a good way to start my day. That's, that's what I started doing. Right. So you're getting a joyful movement out of walking. So there was one that we mentioned about mobility. So people could decide to do a few squats, maybe a few stretches. Um, those things can be really simple. You know, dancing is pretty easy too, right? Put up three minutes, like I said, you know, put the happy song on and just dance around. You get another little point on your checklist for that. So think about things that you can do that are just a lot of fun to bring you joy. That's good. Maybe people could video and post them up on your site. Okay. That'd be so funny. You, well, guess what, Rob? Oh, no. no <laughs> when you put that out, then that becomes a challenge for Rob. Okay, everyone, what do you uh -huh, think? Uh -huh. so we're going to watch Rob. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, some joyful <laughs> movement. Okay. That's joyful joyful move movement. All yeah, right. There we go. On day that. one. <laughs> no, what, no, that's day five, isn't it? I can say But that. remember, but with the checklist, you're meant to check off each day from those boxes of what Oh, you one do. of each of them each day. One oh. of each each day. Each okay. and every day, at least one thing. Well, that changed okay. the whole thing. I was thinking this is pretty easy. Now you can ask. Okay. Pick one thing each day. So that's what everyone can think about. What is the one thing they want to do? If you can do more than one, that's fine. But in those five, say, okay, this is the one that I want to achieve. This is the one that I feel that I can accomplish. Uh, because we want to set little goals. So take the lowest hanging fruit, whatever that's going to be for you. Awesome. So that's, so that's the daily checklist. And then we also have the tracker. So in your journal, you're going to have uh, a little checklist and tomorrow, Rob, we'll go through what your uh, daily journal looks like. Uh, okay. Because in the daily journal, we have a morning mantra. We have things that I'm looking forward to for today. And then in the evening, we have some nighttime sharing, going through our gratitudes and that sort of thing. So Rob, um, because we're highlighting you, so I'm hoping that you'll be able to share those things with us on the channel. Okay, sure. Okay, great. Yep. Why not? <laughs> Put it out there. So now everybody's um, going to know my secrets. <laughs> well, you know, I think Rob, though, really, when we're more open and we share, you know, and I openly tell people things that are going on in my life, 
uh, you know, as a physician, you know, I've spoken openly on Mental Health Awareness Day, and I tell people that I have been in counseling for the past nine years. I do not mind sharing that information because I feel that others need to know that they're not alone and that it's okay. You know, often we live in this world of secrecy because we, we're afraid to share, but when we do share, when we, be, when we become a little bit vulnerable, and that actually helps others to open up a little bit too. So I think, you know, your show and your program is how you can change the world. And I think, Rob, by you being willing to be, to share and to be vulnerable for our audience, that it's really going to help uh, change at least one person's life, I'm sure, on this challenge. So thanks for being awesome. here. Awesome. Well, thank you for uh, putting it out there so we can make a difference. Yeah. I like it. So that's the brief overview. And just a few more minutes, I just want to answer some of the questions that had come out on the Facebook page. So people had some specific points. So the first one, when it comes to food, okay, so the basis of this challenge is no sugar, nothing processed, and nothing packaged, okay? So think of it that way. And so when it comes to gluten, that was one of our big questions, this challenge is gluten-free. So Rob, do you want to just share about some issues that you've had personally with gluten? Uh, well, I, I have a lot of back pain. I work, have back problems and stuff. And I find if I eat bread and things like that, uh, it, it stirs it up worse. When I stopped eating bread, it seemed to be not so bad. And I don't have as many stomach pains and back pain. So eliminating bread from my diet seems to be a much better for me. I don't know for other people, but for me, it does. Yeah, that's great, Rob. Like many people will have what's called non-gluten, non-celiac gluten sensitivity. So it means that they are sensitive to gluten, to bread, and they only know it when they go a couple of days without. So for those of you that are here, it's just five days, right? Five days in the challenge that you're going to go without bread. And I know that you can all get through it. And then it's going to be able to see how your body's responding without having that gluten. Um, Another question that came through was about coffee, okay? So coffee, yes, it's permitted on the program. I really would, you know, coffee is natural. Um, you know, coffee beans are simply roasted. Um, but what I would say is that I don't want you putting sugar in your coffee, okay, if you can avoid it. Um, if you really feel you need a little bit of sugar, then like I said yesterday, that you can use a little bit of Lakanto or Swerve or monk fruit, those would be okay. Again, these are not, this is what you think that you can handle for yourself. If you wanna go five days without coffee, if you feel that that's something you just wanna challenge yourself with, then go ahead and do that. Um, but some people have said, Rob, if I chose to go without coffee, then what would I use for stimulation? So what gets you going, Rob, other than coffee? Wow, that's a tough one. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a coffee guy all the way. I get up in the morning and I, I, first thing I do is go put my coffee on and I have my cup of coffee and then I go to work. But lately I've been drinking beet juice. Uh, I've heard that's good for your blood pressure and stuff. I, I'm not, I'm not crazy about the taste yet, but it's, I'm growing, it's growing on me. And uh, what I, other than that, I don't really, uh, I'm not a morning food person. I sort of eliminated it from my diet. So I, I can't really tell you other than coffee. That's it for me. I'm like most people. It's the coffee. Well, and coffee, again, it's a good stimulant, but some people may find we have to get away maybe from something processed that stimulates us. Literally, if you're feeling you need a little bit of a stimulation, do your dance, right? Do your, uh, go for even dance. five, yeah, go okay. for a five, go for a five minute walk, sit down and do a few deep breaths. Many of those things can give us a stimulation without the coffee itself, okay? Now, someone had also asked about coffee when it comes to bulletproof coffee. Um, and many people who follow ketogenic or a very low carbohydrate program uh, would know about Bulletproof Coffee. Essentially, it's having coffee with butter. And yes, go right ahead. You know, butter is a whole food. Butter is approved on the five-day challenge. So you can go and mix those things together. Or if you want to use MCT oil. So MCT is coconut oil. It is simply an oil. There's nothing added to it. So for those individuals that want to do it, that's okay on the program. Uh, now, someone also had asked about salad dressings to use. So, Rob, um, what would be an unprocessed salad dressing that people could put on top of their salads? Because I know you're into salads lately. Uh, well, a little balsamic vinegar with a little olive oil. It's really good for you. Perfect. Stuff like that. So. Perfect. Cha-ching. You get a point for that one, Rob. Oh, I get a point. <laughs> so I actually don't, I don't even put salad dressing anymore. So 
I've learned to eat it without. So. I don't take any chances, but that would be one I would use if I was going to use. So olive oil is great. And, you know, for me, I don't typically mix things together, but sometimes if I'm having guests over, I would do olive oil, balsamic vinegar, maybe a little bit of Dijon mustard, uh, or maybe a little bit of, you know, red wine vinegar, something like that, because you can get lots of great taste. I love extra virgin olive oil. And actually, actually I'd encourage you to add that to your diet if you're not. There's so many anti-inflammatory properties of extra virgin olive oil. Um, it's, it is good for us. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I didn't know that. So those uh, sweet, uh, you know, raspberry, strawberry dressings aren't good for you. <laughs> no. And, you know, this is, again, part of that false advertising and marketing, because many times, you know, and we're, we'll talk about it this week, we'll look at some carb counting and how we can actually look at label reading. A lot of those things are loaded with sugar. So you might see, ooh, raspberry vinaigrette. But if you turn the bottle over, it says five grams of carbohydrates per tablespoon. So those are the kind of things that we're trying to get away with. And also I'm really during this challenge trying to get people to reset their taste buds because a lot of times we get used to these things, a lot of these additives and preservatives. And when we actually get down to the bare foods, like by day four and five, you're going to find how sweet fruit can taste just all on its own when you haven't had all those processed sugars during the week. Oh um, yeah. I'm learning that actually, because now they've become part of my dinner diet to actually eat fruits and berries and stuff. And wow, it's amazing. Yeah, and I look forward to you sharing some of your meal ideas, Rob, because I think you have a very colorful plate that you've been uh, been showing me of your of your meals. Yeah, well, your list there it seemed to uh, <laughs> the rainbows, all the colors of the rainbow. So I keep thinking, well, what's the most colorful thing I got in the fridge? <laughs> and and that's what I want you to do. Someone had asked about fruits and vegetables. Yes, you want to really like overload as many vegetables as you can get, unlimited amounts of vegetables. Okay, the fruits keep it in proportion, right? You know, if you go and eat an entire watermelon, then that's out of proportion. Uh, but having a few different fruits and vegetables, especially of different, um, different colors. Now, when it comes to portion sizes, someone asked about that. So my general rule for portion sizes is this, okay? So basically vegetables, things that are leafy and green, you can put them in your hands. Two hands, you can hold them all. Vegetables that are more dense, you know, like, you know, beets or carrots or potatoes, you want them the size of kind of a fist. So that means that you don't go overboard with those types of vegetables. When it comes to meat and protein, you want it the size of your palm, okay? And you want about three servings a day of that, you know, the size of your palm and then the width of your palm. So if you're only having two meals a day, then you might have a slightly higher amount of protein. And so Rob, even based on some of the meals you had sent before, I think you do need more protein uh, in your diet, because protein, it really is essential for us. And then the third would be, fourth would be when it comes to fats, we want a serving of fat that's about the size of your thumb. So, you know, that can be butter. So two to three servings of this, right? So it can be butter, it can be olive oil, um, it can be um, any other types of, you know, coconut oil, uh, nuts and seeds, avocado, those are all good sources of healthy fats for us as well. Okay. Um, now, another person had asked about shopping. So you don't have to go buy a lot of fancy things for this, okay? If you want to go to the grocery store, the easy way to go shopping is just to go to the fruit and vegetable aisle. Load up on vegetables. We're talking about high fiber vegetables, which is most of them that are there. If you load up on vegetables, your belly's going to get full from the vegetables and from the size of, of eating that many vegetables during the daytime. It doesn't have to be fancy. I showed you my cupboards because this is how I eat. If you're not a nut lover, you don't have to go buy nuts, but you do need to have healthy sources of uh, fruits and vegetables and proteins. Now, for those of you that are vegetarians or those that don't eat meat, first, um, unless you're vegan, you can still eat eggs. Eggs are so wonderful. They're so healthy for us. You know, I do prefer that people have, you know, locally grass-fed chickens where they get their uh, eggs from, um, but eggs can be a great source of protein or you can have a shake. People had asked about that. There are, for those of you that aren't eating meat, you could have a like a peep based protein shake if you wanted to have that, like a pure pea protein, and then you could have your vegetables added to that. A lot of people love to make smoothies with like blueberries, maybe some greens, like some spinach or avocado, an excellent shake for you to have in the morning. Uh, supplements are not required on this program. Uh, I will do another video on this uh, at another time. Someone asked me about SAMe, but I'll get back to you on that. Um, and what else do we have here? 
simplicity, okay? This is about simplicity. This is about uncomplicating things. The one thing that I think we've done in medicine and healthcare is we try to make it so hard, okay? And I am trying to make this fun and to make it easy for you. And I think if life can be more fun and easy, then you're gonna stick with habits that make a lot more sense to you in the long run. Because Rob, even since you've been diagnosed with you know, pre-diabetes and you've started to make the lifestyle changes, do, again, do you find it more complicated or less complicated, I guess, than from what you used to do before? Well, it's getting less complicated, but it's, it's just more routine. It, it started out more complicated because you have to figure out what I am going to eat, what I can't eat, but I don't, I'm not to the point of measure my food and my grams. I, I just think healthy, like I'm going to eat salad, a little piece of whatever, eggs, something, and some vegetables. And, and I keep it pretty simple and I only eat once a day. So it's been a, a simple process turning around, sort of get my mind thinking about food, not being so important. You know, before a food was like, can't wait to get in front of the TV, get a big bag of chips, you know, get my beer, whatever, <laughs> you know, to sit back and relax and enjoy myself, get home from work, sit down, watch the TV and you know, whatever that's uh, that. So it's different lifestyle changes. That's all. So in the beginning, you're right. It's a little bit hard, maybe kind of figuring out, you know, should I be eating this? Should I not be eating this? Uh, which is why when you look at whole foods and generally you're going to be going right when it comes to whole foods and for those, you know, beyond this five days, we are going to have um, I'll have support for you for those that want to take the next step to know how we can do this, sustain this long term. But for this week, think about simplicity, whole, not in a package. Um, again, um, not eating before going to bed, getting to bed at a reasonable hour, moving your body every day and expressing some sort of self-love, compassion or gratitude. And well, if you I, I, I do think that part's important. You're that how you start your day matters because. Most of us at, in our lifetime wake up going, oh, how am I going to pay the mortgage? You know, what, what I don't want to go to work today. I can't stand that guy at work. Oh, the life's, you know, that, that's what we think about. Very first thing. First thing you should think about is get up, do your stretches, like you said, and start. Uh, what I do now is I, I actually have a sort of, some people meditate or pray or whatever they do. I have different things. I have plants in my office. I come in that have certain uh, people connected to them that I think about and pray about. I have a, a different Sharma thing on my desk that I read each day, something positive, a note that I'm going to think about. And then I, uh, I, I have friends that I talk with that send me things and, and motivate my day and, and kind of inspires me up. So right off the bat, I'm not thinking about any of the bad stuff in my life. I'm thinking, yeah, there's some, there's a good world out there. Let's go out and make a difference. And then my mantra all day is always, how are we going to change the world, make it a better place? We got to start with ourselves. So that's, that's what I'm working on. Well, it's great to have you here, Rob, and it's great the work that you're doing and the own, your own personal self-care and for you being willing to share this with everyone here on the challenge. So if there are more questions that come in, I will just answer to the responses on the Facebook page itself. Uh, a copy of this video is going to be made available for those. Somebody else got to post some uh, morning dance videos too. That's well, I'm looking for yours. I might, <laughs> maybe I'll challenge you to that one. I, uh, <laughs> Okay, I'll, 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 I'll accept your challenge. and I will There we go. Okay. okay, how's that? Um, so tomorrow we'll see everybody live again at noon. And uh, let the challenge begin.